Hi everybody, it's Paige from Jeff and Paige, and today it's nature story time. I'm here on Lake Ontario in Western New York. It's a place that I've come every year since before I was born. And whenever I'm up here, I like to read this book series called Sweet Pickles. Uh, the book I'm gonna read to you today is called Me to Iguana, and it's by Jacqueline Reinach and illustrated by Richard Hefter from the Sweet Pickle series, Me to Iguana. This was my favorite book when I was a little girl. Also, after we're done reading this book, we have a super special surprise for you. It's a new song about iguanas. Iguana had a lovely color and a long bumpy tail, an apartment and a balcony with a tree growing on it. But she wasn't satisfied with her lovely green color or her long bumpy tail. Whatever anybody else had, she wanted to. There's Iguana. At the supermarket, Iguana saw Elephant, the manager, lifting cans of soup with her trunk. A trunk, cried Iguana. Me too, me too. I want a trunk too. So Iguana went home. She found a piece of hose and cut it into a trunk for herself. Good, now I have a trunk too. At the barber shop, Iguana saw a lion getting his mane trimmed. A mane! Me too, me too. I want a mane too. So Iguana went home, stuck a lot of thick yellow wool all over her said, head and said, Good, now I have a mane and a trunk too. At the car wash, Iguana watched Zebra taking a shower. His black and white stripes gleamed in the sunlight. Stripes? Me too, me too. I want stripes too. So Iguana went home to make stripes. In the town of Sweet Pickles, all of the animals are characters. There's one for each letter of the alphabet. We're on I for Iguana. Back to on the way, Iguana saw Goose taking a nap. Her feathers were flapping in the breeze. Feathers? Me too, me too. I want feathers too. So Iguana went home to make stripes like zebra and feathers like Goose. She used jars of paint, a wide brush, and soon she had the feathers out of an old pillow. She glued them onto her back. Good, now I have a trunk and mane and stripes and feathers too. Everybody wondered what Iguana was doing. Why was she imitating them? Oh, worried Walrus. This could be a problem. Walrus is the worrier of the bunch. At the post office, Stork was flying in with the airmail. Stork was flying in with the airmail delivery. Flying, cried Iguana. Me too, me too. I want to fly too. So she went home to figure out how to make wings. <sighs> oh, this is a problem, said Walrus. Iguana can't fly. She'll hurt herself. Everybody agreed this me too business had to stop before it was too late. But how? Why would a nice iguana with a lovely green color and a long bumpy tail want a trunk and mane and stripes and all the rest? Why? Everyone wondered. Because, said Zebra, he's pretty zany. She must think that a trunk and a mane and stripes or all the rest are better. But how do we stop her? wondered Elephant. That's a good question, said Stork. Everybody thought and whispered and scratched their heads, and in the end, they wrote a letter. Stork dropped it at Iguana's balcony. It said, everybody come to a costume party at the playground, but the costumes must be surprises. No talking about them. Iguana forgot all about wanting to fly. A costume party? Me too, me too. Everybody will be there, but what will I wear? I want to wear what everyone else is wearing too. 
When it was time for the party, Iguana still didn't have a costume. She sneaked into the playground and hid behind a tree. In the distance behind the swings, she saw a flash of green. She also saw a flash of green under the slide and near the jungle gym. What could it be? Oh, nobody has a trunk, said Iguana. Nobody has a stripes. Nobody has a mane. Nobody has feathers. She was taking all of her costume off. She moved closer to get a better look. Everybody's costume was a lovely green color. Everybody had a long bumpy tail. Everybody was dressed as an iguana. Come join the party, you're dressed perfectly. But I'm not wearing a costume, Iguana said. This is just plain me. Then Stork said, there is a prize for the best Iguana and the prize goes to Iguana. You have the loveliest green color, a most beautiful bumpy tail. Congratulations. We all think you're wonderful just the way you are. Yes, said Iguana, very surprised. I do too. Did somebody say Iguana? I did, Jeff. Should we sing that song? Here is a sneak preview of a brand new song that we've never before performed. We've barely even sung it together, actually. We're just starting to workshop it for... Our next album, and it just so happens to be about iguanas. It's called Iguanas on the Roof, and it stars a herpetologist named Alice, who's trying really hard to study these creatures. Since I'm just learning the song, I'm also going to use some of the lyrics on the computer. Enjoy. Sunrise on a Caribbean isle, a lonely herpetologist sits for a while, watching the iguanas and jotting in her journal. He can diagram vision, a parietal eye that senses light, and any threat in the sky, and iguanas sleep all night, which makes them diurnal. And that is why they bask in the sun in the Starting their metabolism, raising their body temperatures until they are ready to move. I wish that I was up there too, with a dewlap on my neck and my reptilian crew. Just another iguana on the roof. Whoa, oh, 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 oh. Iguanas on the roof, iguanas on the roof, kicking it island style.